Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tony. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Tony. Happy birthday, Tony. Happy birthday, Tony. Well, I've known Tony for since I was nine years old. Um, he used to take me to Sunday school, come and pick me up from home and my brother and sister. And um, I'd just like to say, if it wasn't for him, for all his, you know, doing all that, bring, taking us to and from Sunday school on a Sunday afternoon, uh, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And um, knowing him all these years, I can't believe uh, that the time has gone so fast. But I wish him a happy 70th birthday from myself my brother and sister and my mum. Thank you, Tony, for all your, your help through the years. Happy, Happy birthday, Tony! Happy birthday, Tony! Happy birthday, Tony! Hi, Tony. First things first, very happy 70th birthday. I hope you had a great day yesterday and have a great day today as well. Wow, what a privilege to be asked to do this recording. I'm pretty sure that much of what I say will quite simply be a variation on a theme and echoed by any number of people in this room. It's a good old principle of sowing and reaping. You are always encouraging us to honour one another and now it's our turn to honour you. Although I suspect that you're sliding further and further down in your seat or wishing the floor would just open up and swallow you. I realised the other day that I've known you for just a little short of half of your life and almost three quarters of mine which sounds like forever, but it doesn't feel like forever. I can still remember clearly the day I turned up at the crusade in Beddington Park and you were one of the first people to speak to me, asking me where I went to church and when I said nowhere, arranging for me to be picked up at the next Sunday and brought along to Sutton Pentecostal Fellowship, as we were in those days. Over the months that followed, you counselled me, because you were allowed to in those days, and you eventually led me to the Lord. Definitely one of your finer moments in my book, and here we are, some 30-something years later. During the years I've known you, you've proven yourself to be a man of godly character and traits, full of great love, integrity and honour, full of godly wisdom and understanding, a great encourager, always encouraging others to be the best that they can be in God and for God. You are always happy to see others succeed, either with you or ahead of you. Everything you do is undergirded with love, preferring the needs of others to yourself. You've imparted these godly characteristics, traits and principles into the lives of so many of us by your example of living them every day. I honestly can't remember how long you've been my boss, but you are no different in the workplace than you are elsewhere. You're one of the best bosses I've ever had. It makes me smile that you can be rattling off something at work, suddenly take a pause, practice your golf swing, and then go back to whatever you were talking about as though you hadn't interrupted yourself. You're amazingly patient at the office, especially on my dear brain days, which is usually when we're doing the accounts, although it never ceases to amaze me that you would quite happily drive three or four miles out of your way on the way to work so that you can avoid a traffic jam, or even worse, a red light that you might have to wait a couple of minutes at. I guess that just must be your impatient outlet. I've said this before, Tone. You're a good man, Tony Horswood. You're a very good man. Thank you for being such a great spiritual mentor and father, a brilliant boss and a wonderful friend. I know without shadow of a doubt that I wouldn't be half the person that I am today were it not for your influence in my life. So thank you. I pray God's blessing on you in the days, months and years to come. God bless you, Tone. God bless you real good. Happy birthday, Tony! Happy birthday, Tony! Happy birthday, Tony! Happy birthday. Um, Tony is just one of those who just seems to go on and on and on. And um, of course, also being a leader in the church, an elder in the church, um, he's someone we all identify with in terms of SEC, you know, I sometimes think Tony is SEC personified. And it's been a pleasure being part of an eldership with Tony. Um, Tony brings so much to the eldership and to the church. He's a real people person, if I can put it that way. And um, we as elders have, what a privilege to work with someone like Tony and learn so much from him too. 
And um, so I, I just want to say happy birthday and Tony have a great day. Wish you the very best and may you have many, many more birthdays uh, to enjoy. Happy, happy birthday, Tony! Tony. <laughs> happy birthday, Tony! Happy, happy birthday, Tony! Tony was born in Woodmanstone and was the eldest of three boys. He had countryside all around him in Woodmanstone and was very good at cross-country racing, so he had plenty of practice. And he loves all sport, and I think he still holds the, the record at Sutton Grammar School for one of the running uh, races, I think so. After school, we both worked at the Legal and General in Kingswood, and that's where we first met. He was 18 and I was 17. Oh. He was very dark skinned and had very dark hair and I used to imagine maybe he came from some exotic country. Well it turned out his mother was a true cockney from the east end of London and his father came from Yorkshire. So we got married in 1966 at St Dunstan's Church, Cheam. And I really can't believe how quickly the last 46 years have gone. I became a Christian first and Tony followed. I think I was quite persuasive actually. And look at him now. He's been a wonderful husband, father and grandfather. And it's my turn to say now, Happy Birthday Tony! Some of you may have seen this before, but just in case you haven't... Uh, all of tonight's rescues are true stories. We sometimes use actors and stuntmen, but everything you see is based on the accounts of the people involved. They've helped us to reconstruct events as they happen. The evening of Friday the 4th of February 2011 began like any other Friday at Sutton Christian Centre in Tate Road, Sutton. At 6pm that evening the popular Friday Kids Club for Children was due to begin. The club had often attracted over 100 children who had arrived for a mixture of games, activities and Bible stories. At around 5.35pm church elder Tony Horswood entered the church hall and noticed that it felt a little chilly. The part of Tony is being played by an actor. What happened next was critical. Feeling the cold, Tony went out to the boiler room to investigate. Earlier in the day, we'd been having some trouble with our heating system. We'd called a man out, but he thought that our gas pressure was too low for the boiler. Exactly what Tony did in the boiler room is not clear, but the outcome was to prove catastrophic. Meanwhile, buses one and two were continuing their journey towards the church, completely unaware at this point of the drama that was unfolding back in Tate Road. We didn't have a clue of the drama that was unfolding at Tate Road last week. Not a clue. Tony had now returned from the boiler room to the hall, where what can only be described as a strange smell of burning was filling the hall. Tony has always had a rather sensitive nose and in fact when I'm cooking in the kitchen you can always tell what it is, it comes in just, just by sense of smell, alone. As the strange smell enveloped the hall, the two coaches filled with children, in addition to a number of other children being brought in by their parents, were now just a matter of minutes away from the church hall. It was at this point that Tony took the decision to call for the fire brigade. I took the call from Mr Horswood at the emergency services control room. The caller spoke very calmly and described the problem to us in a clear and concise manner. He said that he was in a church hall in the Sutton area and that there was a funny burning smell. By now the smell was getting even stronger and some of the children had already arrived at the hall ready for the start of the club. They were asked to wait outside until the fire brigade arrived. I can't remember ever having been called out to investigate a strange smell in a Pentecostal church before. 
I had bells and smells down with the other lot. It wasn't long before pumps one and two from Sutton's Blue Watch arrived in Tate Road. Throughout the ordeal, Tony had remained inside the hall while the children and other helpers kept to a safe distance in front of the building. At home, news of the crisis had reached Wendy, Tony's wife. Well, I did get a little worried. I mean, to be trapped inside that hall with such a smell, well, I think he's very brave. Using heat-seeking cameras, the firemen made a very thorough investigation of the premises. We have actual footage of some of the events of that night. As a fireman, when you find yourself facing something like a nasty burning smell, well, the adrenaline just kicks in and sees you through. I think that if you thought too much about it, you couldn't do the kind of job we have to do. You need to go in there, get the job done, and then get out again. It's as simple as that. After a nerve-wracking 20 minutes or so, the firemen eventually emerged, having satisfied themselves that the church was no longer in danger. They hadn't been able to detect any fire that may have caused the smell. We had a bit of a sniff around, but couldn't find any evidence of a fire. And then we headed back to base for a camera. It was then that Tony opened the doors and let the children into the hall, where the club continued almost as planned. But not until Tony had explained to the children exactly what had happened. We had a funny smell. And it smelt like burning. And it smelt a lot like burning. So we called the fire brigade. Well, they say there's no smoke without fire, but this time there wasn't any smoke or any fire. Just the smell. Yes, happy birthday, Tony. Is that it? <laughs> you sure? <laughs> Don't know how much I was dreading that. <laughs>